Welcome to Movie Class by Pizza Flicks. Please stay tuned for today's program, but first, some tasty tidbits from your host. No one defines Hollywood, the dream, the glamour, and the tabloid gossip quite like Lana Turner. On the silver screen, we watched a blossom from a teenage beauty to an unforgettable femme fatale to a breathtaking technicolor goddess. Our love life, on the other hand, was a train wreck. Eight marriages, including two to Stephen Crane, who gave Lana her only child, Cheryl. A long list of high-profile romances provided constant cannon fodder for the Hollywood rags, but no one could have imagined the blonde bombshell would star in the biggest Hollywood scandal in decades. 1957, she began a secret and stormy affair with Hollywood gigolo Johnny Steele, a.k.a. Johnny Stampanato, mob enforcer and right-hand man for L.A. kingpin Mickey Cohen. On the night of April 4th, Lana's teenage daughter grabbed a carving knife and stabbed Stampanato to death in her mother's pink bedroom. Everyone in the house that Good Friday, Lana, Cheryl, and the housekeeper kept to that story. A coroner's inquest returned a decision of justifiable homicide. Hollywood takes care of its own. And now for our feature presentation. A sultry nightclub singer dreams of becoming a star and meeting Prince Charming. A romance begins with a suave but mysterious stranger. Could he be the one? Find out and watch MGM's forgotten 1951 Technicolor musical. Federica Brown can tell us this. Grazie. Thank you, thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, signore, signori, the kid from Albuquerque, a la ki I don't know how to say kid in Italian, but anyway, Miss Federica Brown. <laughs> do what to do what to do my love like my mule can't make up his mind what to do what to do what to do crazy critters so doggone arbitrary i get the jitters just talking to the prairie air they don't care they don't care they don't care they don't care tisn't fair tisn't fair tisn't fair tisn't fair 
Sí, lomo con la barba y su lascala. My love and my mule, get balky and... Va bene? Benissimo. What to do, what to do, what to do, they break every week. Grazie tanti. Brother, it's quite a routine. When a man and a donkey can both make a monkey of one pig-headed fool. Hip hooray, hip hooray, let them say what they may, I'm a fool. For my love and my mule. My love and my mule are getting my goat. What to do, what to do, what to do? Believe me, it's cruel. Sister, a heck of a note. And I quote and unquote. When a man and a donkey can both make a monkey and one pig-headed fool. Hip hooray, hip hooray, let them say what they may, I'm a fool. Indeed it is, mademoiselle. Well, I I don't think I know you. To your long list of admirers, mademoiselle, I would like myself to be added. Thank you. I congratulate you on your singing. Well, thank you very much. And it occurred to me you might care to join me for a late supper. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sure mademoiselle must tire of restaurants. Up at my villa, just the two oh, of us can... Oh, now look, Buster, why don't you forget the whole thing and go home and shave? Mademoiselle, you are a stranger in a strange country. All I have done was to offer my hospitality. And all I'm saying is, thanks a million, but will you please get out of here? Mademoiselle, there is no need to lose your temper. If one is young and beautiful, one must expect the will attention... Will you get out of here? Do Signore. I have to send for... If this gentleman is annoying you... I should be pleased to remove him. Maybe you could save me the trouble. Your name, Signore. My name? I... I... It, it is distasteful to me, Signore, to fight a duel with an inferior. A duel? Are you kidding? Not at all, mademoiselle, unless this gentleman apologizes as he leaves the room. I do apologize, mademoiselle. I, I, I did not know. And now what you do? Good night. Good night. Hey, do you really go around stabbing at people? I have learned, mademoiselle, that if one threatens loudly enough, one never has to fight. <laughs> Say you're pretty smart. I accept your compliment, mademoiselle, and should like to return it. I found your performance enchanting. Much obliged. For many nights I have watched you, not only with admiration, but envy. Beyond everything else in the world, I wanted to be a singer. What stopped you? Unfortunately, circumstances compel me to enter my father's business. Oh? What do you do? I work for the government. Oh, well, lots of people do that at home, too. So one hears. Pardon me. Well, uh, I have to change my costume. Imagine the impertinence. A complete stranger asking you to go with him to his villa, without a chaperone. Hm. I, too, have a villa only 50 kilometers from here. But would I ask you to go with me to it, without a chaperone? Oh, certainly not. Of course, at this hour, it might be difficult for me to find one. Well, uh... I could find a chaperone. You could? Well, sure. Georgie Hoskins and his California cowboys. All of them? <laughs> Look, mister. Imperium. Imperium. Well, uh, thanks a lot, but good night. Mademoiselle, this is Italy. Out there is the Mediterranean. Over it, the most. Beautiful moon. Oh, I love Italy and the Mediterranean. 
and the moon. Of course you do. And I get all of it. Every night, right from my balcony. I sit out there with a chicken sandwich and a glass of milk, all by myself, and love it. What a waste of uh, the Mediterranean. Uh, well, uh, good night, Mr. Imperium. Good night, mademoiselle. You are married? Oh, not me. Oh, that is a pity. A great pity. Because if mademoiselle were madame, it would be quite correct for me to kiss her hand. Thus, but since mademoiselle is unmarried, one is only permitted to shake the hand. Thus. <laughs> well, uh, if I ever do get married, I'll let you know. Uh, good night. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. I'll be seeing you. Giovanni. Buonasera, signorina. Chicken sandwich. Good. Glass of milk. Si mangia sempre la stessa cosa, signorina. Sempre la stessa cosa. Always the same thing. Brava, brava, signorina. Well, I'm learning. Grazie. Buonanotte, signorina. Buonanotte, Giovanni. Well, 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 what a coincidence. Well, isn't it? And I don't think I like it. No? There was a nice couple living in that room. They were from Texas. Texas, eh? What happened to them? Oh, they are extremely happy in a deluxe suite at the same price. I thought you had a villain near here. I do. It was no trouble to have my suitcases packed. Desidera qualche cos'altro? Altezza? No. Giovanni, Signorina? what was that you just said? Desidera qualche cos'altro? No, no, uh, the, the last word, al, al... Altezza? Yes. What does it mean? It means uh, your royal highness. Why did he call you that? Oh, because of a very unfortunate accident. Accident? Of birth. Forgive me. But I am Prince Alexei de Lavard de Corporantogde. Prince Alexei de, de... Just call me Al. Your Highness. Yes? This... The whole thing is what we call a setup, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Uh, what I mean is, you've got plans. Yes. And this routine, uh, you've used it many times before? Yes. Usually with great success. Oh, yes. <laughs> but sometimes, oh, not often, I'm sure, but sometimes a failure. Yes. I suppose I should have recognized you. Your picture's in the paper often enough. You're always winning medals for climbing mountains, aren't you? Yes. Well, Your Highness, I hope you realize you're not going to win any medals tonight. Yes. Well? As long as we understand each other, there is no reason why I should not sit here and enjoy the... Mediterranean. Mm. The Mediterranean went that away. I am supremely content with the view. Perhaps 
I can tempt you with a little champagne. Uh, my friend, you can't tempt me, period. Period. Well, not that I don't admire your technique, the lengths you go to. That man with a beard and that baloney about a duel and getting those nice Texas people to move. Champagne, caviar, the moonlight, the Mediterranean. Oh, I can take no credit for the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. We'll take a bow for putting it to good use. Oh, I knew there was something missing. Soft music. You do not like music? Oh, I love it. But, um, where are the violins? Violins? Well, a man who would think of everything would surely think of violins. Mademoiselle, I would consider violins extremely, as you say, corny. Charming. Well, uh, good night, your... Al. 
good night. Oh, I can't call you Al. But I may call you Frederica. Frederica Brown. It doesn't suit you, no. I shall call you Fred. Fred? It's an Italian word, but it describes you perfectly. Well, what does it mean? Oh, it's one of those untranslatable words. But believe me, my dear, it describes you. Fred. I like it. Oh. Well, good night. Arrivederci. Fred. Arrivederci. Freda. Freda Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, the kid from Albuquerque, Miss Freda Brown. Hi, Freda. Describes you perfectly. Well, of all the. Pronto? Camera due sei quattro per favore. Hello? Freda? Uh, very funny. What? Freda. Well, aren't you? Aren't I what? Very, very Freda. Look, Your Highness, I'm a tired working girl. Where are you now? In my room. I know. But where? I'm at the telephone. Where is the telephone? It's over there on the desk. Over there in the desk? Strange. In my room is by the bed. So? So, I was thinking. Go on. I was thinking that uh, since you do not trust me in the moonlight, perhaps tomorrow when the sun is shining, you would drive with me in my car? Or uh, we could sail a little boat. Or anything else you'd like to do. Nothing fatal ever happens in the sunshine. <laughs> well, perhaps, Your Highness, if you'll call me in the morning. Then you do trust me. Oh, yes. I trust you. Good night. Arrivederci. You do trust me. You do trust me. Oh, yes, Your Highness. I trust you.
find your little friend. He seems to have lost his father and mother. <laughs> what was here once upon a time, a castle? Perhaps a watchtower built by the Saracens 1,200 years ago. So that we could enjoy the view. Well, here comes his family. <laughs> Buongiorno, signore. Buongiorno. Buongiorno, signorina. Well, buongiorno, bambino. You insulted him. Insulted him? Bambino is baby. Ragazzo is boy. Buongiorno, ragazzo. Buongiorno, signorina. <laughs> <laughs> He's no longer insulted. <laughs> um, buongiorno, Al. Buongiorno, Fredda. Pretty name? Dear name. <laughs> Dear name. <laughs> Cara mia. Uh, my dear. My dear. <laughs> um, the only Italian I knew before I came here was uh, spaghetti and ravioli. And now you know pizza and antipasto. I know one more Italian word. Andiamo. Andiamo. But andiamo means let's go. <laughs> That's right, dear. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> <laughs> He's an Italian donkey. Oh. What was that new word you were teaching me? Andiamo. That's right. Andiamo. Andiamo, andiamo, my bambina, let's go. Cara mia, look around you, what a beautiful show. So come with me presto, caro nome, my love. The sun is high above. Andiamo, andiamo for a glorious spring. Cavo allegro, how we watch it, how alive is the spring. And we are alive to each other, and so I sing fortissimo. Do you love me? Passo la si, la si, no. If you love me, I'll be so bravissimo. Andiamo, andiamo to a hilltop of pine. We'll have pizza, antipasto, and some very good wine. So come with me presto, for time goes so fast. The bright booker, the perfect day. Where never made to last. Andiamo, andiamo. My bambina, let's go. Cara mia, look around you. What a beautiful show. So come with me. Presto. Caro nome, my love. The sun is high above. Andiamo, andiamo for a glorious spring. How, Allegro, how, vivace. how alive is the spring. And we are alive to each other, and so we, we sing, sing for this. Do you love me? Ba, sol, la, si, la, la si, do. do you love me? Si, si, ha, bravissimo. Andiamo, andiamo, to a hilltop of pine. We'll have pizza, antipasto, and some very good wine. So come with me, presto, for the time goes so fast. The bride booker, the perfect day, where no Andiamo, andiamo, 
You can see Corsica. Gosh, if the kid's back in Albuquerque, he could see me now. Do you come here very often? Yes, very often. Oh? Who with? My little son. Tell me about your son. What would you like to know? Well, does he look like you? Oh, by an odd coincidence, I just happened to have these with me. <laughs> oh, how old is he? Not yet six. And he rides? Like one of your cowboys. I taught him. <laughs> What's he doing there? Playing chess with my father, the king. I taught him to box, too. Uh, you did? Indeed, I did. And you know what happened? He got into a fight with the gardener's boy, eight years old, three inches taller. Well, that wasn't so funny. But it was. It was terribly funny. One punch from the gardener's boy and my little prince got two beautiful black eyes. <laughs> he told me he fell in the bus stop. You must be proud of him. Very proud. I bet he's proud of you, too. For a whole year, after we lost his mother, I never left the palace. It gave us a chance to become Wonderful friends. What does he want to be when he grows up? <laughs> oh, I mean... <laughs> a lawyer's son may be an engineer, a doctor's son may be a prize fighter, but uh, when one is born in the shadow of a throne, one dies in that shadow. You don't want him to be a king? I do not. But if he were a good king, and, and he ruled wisely... A king does not rule. He is only a symbol. I do not wish my son to be a symbol. And you? You do not want to be a king? No. I don't want to be a king. But for me, it's too late. All my life, I've accepted the privilege of a prince. Therefore, I cannot shirk the duty of a king. When I was a little girl, I remember a story about a little boy, an ordinary little boy. One fine day, he discovered that he had been changed into a prince. Well, why can't it be the other way around? Perhaps it can. Lassido, do you know me? Entrate, la, 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 Giovanni. Telegramma, Tessa. Un momento, Giovanni. Giovanni, mi devi fare un grande favore. Dì alla signorina Brown che sono andato a Genova, ma che ritornerà in tempo per il nostro chicken sandwich e glass of milk. Va benissimo, Altezza. Non ti dimenticare, è importantissimo. No, Altezza. Dà questo fiore alla signorina Brown.
What is it, Bernard? What is so urgent? It's your father. Serious? Desperately. Why didn't your telegram say this? With your royal hands out of the country, I dare not put it in the wire. Bernard, first I must send a message to Rapallo. I beg you, sir, every minute counts. A piece of paper, Bernard, a pen, a pencil. Bernard, take my car. Go to the Riviera Hotel in Rapallo and deliver this note to... Miss Frederica Brown? Activities are seldom secret, sir. But uh, note is hardly necessary. I will handle this matter with my usual discretion. This matter, as you choose to call it, is not usual. You will deliver this note to Miss Brown and follow me on the earliest plane. As you wish, sir. I know. You are Miss Brown? Yes. My name is Bernand. I hope you will forgive this intrusion, but I come to you with a message from His Royal Highness. Well, is something wrong? I'm afraid so. Three days ago, His Majesty, His Royal Highness's father, became seriously ill. This morning, his condition became critical. Naturally, he would want his son and heir at his side. Oh, naturally. On learning of the seriousness of the situation, his Royal Highness was compelled to leave without benefit of goodbyes. I see. His Majesty is not expected to live. Hence, His Royal Highness will become our king. I, by the way, am His Majesty's Prime Minister, and I brought you... A letter? His Royal Highness's regrets. I suppose with the... Uh, practice, one should become callous to these situations, but uh, somehow I never find them easy. What is it that you don't find easy? To uh, say he's au revoir. His Royal Highness is so sentimental. Goodbyes become impossible for him. Fortunately, you are an American. Americans are practical, mademoiselle. Few knew. What I've been through with some of these European women. You have my sympathy. I've always heard that European women are very... Impractical. I see you are about to enjoy your supper, mademoiselle. Good appetite and goodbye. Oh, I almost forgot. If when mademoiselle is in Paris, she would pair this to Cartier and select, say, some modest jewel that uh, might catch her fancy, His Royal Highness would be very grateful. Good night, Mr. Bernand. Mademoiselle.
Wait for me. I'll be about ten minutes. All right, Mr. Hunter. Hello, Mr. Hunter. Hello, Mac. I'm not through shooting the test yet. They have just finished the last shot, sir. Huh? Anna. Yeah, yeah, madame. Oh, what time is it? Oh, half past eleven. Oh, I'll just about make it. Right on. Oh, hello, darling. <laughs> I want to talk to you. So I want to talk to you, too. Well, let me get out of this, and I'll be right with you. Oh, we've got to move fast. Yes, madam. Did you talk to Palm Springs? Yes, madam. Everything arranged? Everything, madam. Did you check with the airport? No, madam, it was too early. But uh, I think by now we can get the information. No, wait, Anna. You're not going with me. Madame? No, I, I'm driving down alone. But uh, I have engaged the rooms for two, one for Madame and one for me. I know, Anna, but uh, I've never kept any secrets from you, have I? Never, Madame. Well, I'm keeping a secret from you now. I know, Madame. What do you know? That ever since you received a telephone call from Paris, Madame has been full of very much secrets. But I understand. Well, if you do, and you just might, see that no one else does. Oh, no, 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 no one, madame. Come in, Paul. Have a cup of coffee, darling, while I change. Thank you. Anna, my beautiful, I'd like to be alone with Miss Barlow. <laughs> you know, monsieur, I do not understand English. <laughs> Anna. Anna. Yes, madame. Why don't you make that phone call outside? Yes, madame. I thought you didn't understand English. <laughs> Not one word. What do you think of Bolton? He's a good actor. I thought he was great. I think we ought to look further. Oh, but, Freda, we've tested over 20. I brought them from New York, from London, from anywhere I can find them. This fellow Bolton's played all the kings there are. Richard, Henry, Lear. Just what is it you're looking for? Mm -hmm. Something. When I find it, I'll know. Do this for me, darling. Uh -huh. Look, honey, I want to talk to you about something. Yes? This is our third picture together. I think it's going to be our best. Mm -hmm. I think so, too. When you first brought me this story, frankly, I was again at American girl falls in love with a king. It seemed um, old-fashioned. Now, somehow, I believe it. I've always believed it, Paul. Okay. So, this is our third picture together. Still no contract, just a handshake. What's wrong with a handshake? Nothing. I like it. Gives me a chance to hold your hand. <laughs> but look, Fred, a fella's gotta make plans. How about a handshake for three or, say, five? Why not ten pictures more? <laughs> so that's what's worrying you. Look, darling, a star can't get any better than the best, and you're the best. Now, why in the world would I ever want to go anyplace else? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine, but there's a little more to it than that. Look, Freda. Five pictures, ten pictures, ten years, twenty years, there's still all that time. All that time between pictures when I don't even see you. Doesn't make sense. We're gonna work together or to be together. Not just at the studio, not just for dinner. Paul. Are you asking me to marry you? I'm not asking you to run for Congress. Oh, why didn't you wait until Monday? Known each other three years. This is Friday. Should have waited till Monday. <laughs> okay, honey, I'll compromise. Give me your answer tonight. I can't see you tonight. No? No, I, I'm going out of town. Oh, where are you going? I'll be back Monday. Monday? Or sooner. And on Monday, I say to you, please, Miss Barlow, will you marry me? Will you, Paul? I don't fall for someone else over the weekend. Well, if you don't. That's fair. And check. Handshake. Goodbye. No, that had better wait for Monday, too. 
maybe a rat. Springs, one four nine seven. Hello, hello, Mrs. Cabot. This is Anna. Anna, Miss Barlow's maid. For three hours, I am calling you from Los Angeles. No, 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 Miss Barlow, she should be there any minute now. Who, me? No, I am not coming. I am sick, very sick. Miss Barlow wants you to know she wants only one room. No, 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 she does not want you to lose money. If you cannot rent the other room, she will pay for it. But please, please, you try to rent the other room. Well, I'll see what I can do. Well, goodbye. Gwen! Gwen! Yes, Aunt Mary? Her maid just phoned. She's not coming? She's coming, but she only wants one room. Really? Please put these in the east room. I'll put these back in the linen closet. Our clock's right for a change. Nevertheless, put the towels in the east room. Yes, Auntie. That's her! The east room, Gwen. Yes, Auntie. Madame Cabot? I'm Mrs. Cabot. Ah. One may enter? Of course. My name is Imperium. Imperium? Imperium. I thought that's what you said. Imperium. I have just arrived from Paris. From Paris? Oh, that seems extraordinary. Oh, well, the, uh, uh... It is my understanding, madame, that you have a room for rent. Well, how'd you hear about it, if we don't advertise? Well, you see, in Paris, it was very cold and very wet. I heard your desert was very warm and very dry. I like warmth, madame. <laughs> oh, we're very warm here. The weather, that is. <laughs> oh, the weather is what I refer to, madame. <laughs> I thought that's what you meant. And so, madame, I boarded the plane, flew to Palm Springs, but unfortunately without reservations. I have tried uh, half a dozen different hotels, and at one of them, one of the clerks said that you occasionally rented rooms, and uh, <laughs> here we are. Well, it just so happens, by the merest coincidence, that I do have a vacancy. Good. I get my bags. <laughs> oh, they're all right out there. Uh, come with me, I'll show you what I've got. Uh, it may not be elegant enough for you, but... Uh... <laughs> a home, I find, uh, usually reflects the personality of each occupant. In this instance, I have no fears, madame. Oh, oh, that's nice of you to say that, Mr. Imperial. It was nothing, madame. Nothing at all. This is the west room. It's just the same as the east room, except it's, uh, it's, uh... West? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, these are the beds. Oh, the beds. You can sleep neither one you like. Good, good. Uh, the dressing room's over there. You don't have to pay attention to that door. Never. It leads into the other room, but... The door's bolted on both sides. A wise precaution. I'm sorry there isn't anyone to get your bags for you. You'll have to bring them in yourself. Of course. <laughs> Mademoiselle? Auntie! Who is he? Mr. Imperium. Who? That's what he said. Imperium. There's no such name. If it's his, there must be. I was just thinking, he's somebody. I don't know. First of all, I thought he was a foreign movie star like Charles Boyer. He's not Charles Boyer. Well, anyway, he looks like an actor. If he is one, Miss Barlow will know who he is. Definitely. I'll ask her. 
You'll do nothing of the sort. Get your feet off the bed. But, Auntie... The only reason she comes here is because it's so quiet. No one ever bothers her, asks her any questions, including you. Well, what's I going to bother her? Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Imperium, there's my niece, Gwendolyn. Mademoiselle, <laughs> delighted. How do you do? I was just saying to Andy, I know I've seen you before. Your picture or something? Uh, Gwen, uh, Oh, I don't mean to be rude, Mr. Imperium, but haven't I? Perhaps, Mademoiselle, in another life we were friends. Oh, Mr. Imperium, what a perfectly dreamy thought. Uh, Gwen, darling, if we're going to the movies tonight, you've got your homework to do. Yes, Auntie. Uh, now, darling. Yes, Auntie. Au revoir. Au revoir. Of course, you don't realize it, but if you'd have arrived just one minute earlier, I wouldn't have had a room for you. Oh, fantastic. Yes, sir. She canceled the room just before you rang the doorbell. You see, she always reserves both rooms. That's so she won't be disturbed or run to strangers or anything. But at exactly one minute two, her maid called, and then the clock struck three. Who's maid? Miss Barlow. Fred Barlow. Fred Barlow. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, you've seen her? In person? On the screen. Oh, my dear, just what do you see on person? She's even more beautiful and young. Where's her hand makeup? Just a little lipstick, maybe a bit of powder. Don't tell the truth down here. She just lies out in the sun with nothing on. No, no makeup, I mean. I do hope her maid knew what she was talking about. I can't understand her giving up one of the rooms. Seems so peculiar because money can't mean anything to her. You'll forgive me if I don't introduce you to Miss Barlow. She's really very sweet and nothing grand about her. But we have sort of an understanding. We never introduce her to anyone. I will be very undemocratic, madame. Auntie! Auntie, she's here! Oh, oh, will you excuse me, please? I've got to greet Miss Barlow. Oh, uh, uh, uh you, you forgot to tell me how long you'll want the room. Until the 17th. The 17th? Uh, that'll be Monday. Would it? Oh, well, today's Friday. Is it? Oh, yes, of course, the 17th would be Monday. <laughs> oh, thank you, Miss Imperium. Oh, dear. What is it? Mr. Imperium. Mr. Imperium? Uh, that's what he says his name is. I knew he was a foreigner, but didn't know he sang. Maybe I should have. Most of them do, I suppose. I don't mind, Mrs. Cabot. Do you love me? A thousand pardons, madame. Of course. It was the strangest thing, Miss Barlow. Just after I hung up the phone, I talked to your maid. The bell rang. There stood Mr. Imperium. Wasn't it the most amazing coincidence? Oh, amazing. <laughs> Gwen, will you please put these in the bathroom? Yes, Auntie. Oh, dear. He's singing again. Will you excuse me, Miss Barlow? Miss Barlow? Yes, Gwen? Who is he? Who? Mr. Imperium. I don't believe there is such a name. Perhaps not. And yet I know I've seen him in something. In something? The movies, I mean. Of course, he's not a star. We don't know right away who he is. But he must be an actor. I can tell. I know I've seen him, Miss Barlow. I just know I've seen him. Well, perhaps you have. But at any rate, I shall see no one for the next few hours. I'm exhausted. May I draw the drapes for you? Mm, that would be wonderful. He is good looking, isn't he? Who? Mr. Imperium. Well, I'm afraid I didn't notice. Well, if there's nothing else I can do. Nothing else, thank you. I ask him not to sing anymore. He was very nice about it. Well, why did you do that? Well, so you can rest, Miss Barlow. Oh, well, that was kind of you. And of him. <laughs> well, rest well. I'll try.
Rebecca Brown. Your Majesty. For twelve years I have waited for this moment. Why have you waited so long? All through the war, I was a prisoner of my palace. I know. I, I prayed for you. Then there was the revolution of the government in exile in Paris. When I learned what Bernard had done to us and I was free to look for you, there was no Frederick Brown. But my name hadn't changed. I was easy to find. So many times I wanted to write. Well, why didn't you? It took a long time for me to forget. A long time to fall in love with someone else. Someone else? Then the phone rang, and the operator said, Paris calling. And then I heard your voice. And I hadn't forgotten you at all. Oh, that's what I waited to hear. What is it, Fred? Well, only that even in Hollywood we we do read the newspapers. And what do you read? That next Tuesday there will be a plebiscite. No people will go to the polls to vote you back onto the throne. You'll be a king again, and and I. So that's it. <laughs> On Tuesday next. There will be a plebiscite, and my people will go to the polls. But they will vote against me, because by that time, they'll know I am here with you to stay. If you will let me. But where is he now? Who? Bernand. Oh, in Paris, so busy with this government in exile. Probably going out of his mind trying to find me. Mm. He found you once before. This time I have been too clever. No one knows I am here except your State Department. So, my darling, on Tuesday next, I will be a king without a throne. A commoner, in love with a queen. She's still resting. She must have been tired. Mr. Imperium was tired, too. It's the desert air. That's a new name for it. What are you talking about, Gwen? Oh, Auntie, don't be so unsophisticated. Shh, Gwen. Oh, uh, good evening, Miss Barlow. Good evening, Mrs. Cabot. Gwen, uh, won't you join us? Oh, no, thank you. Well, there's plenty here. We're going to the movie afterward. Would you like to go with us? Well, thanks very much, but it's such a lovely night. I thought I'd take a little drive and get a bite of dinner and then come back to bed. I hope Mr. Imperium's all right. We haven't seen him since I showed him the room. My love and my mule are two of a kind. What to do, what to do, what to do? My love like my mule. So... <laughs> Forgive me, madame. I forgot my promise. I think you've got a wonderful voice, Mr. Imperium. You could be an opera. Oh, you flatter me, mademoiselle. I'll bet without my accent, you would all think me a cowboy. Oh, even with the accent. Oh, what a wonderful evening. Everybody paying me compliments. Uh, that's a very old song. Where'd you learn it? In Italy, madame. And you remembered it? It was sung, uh, not too well, mind you, <laughs> by a very beautiful woman. I remember the woman and therefore the song. Oh, I think that's charming, Mr. Imperium. Don't you, Miss Barlow? Oh, charming. Not original, mind you, but charming. Madame, there is so much originality in the world and so little charm. For example... For example? For us to dine together would not be very original, but it would be charming. <laughs> well, the restaurants here are rather limited. To me, Mr. Imperium, you suggest uh, caviar, champagne... On the contrary, madame. I am the chicken sandwich in the glass of milk type. <laughs> well, we can do better than that. There's a little place halfway up the mountain. Charcoal broil steaks. Oh, Miss Barlow, you have talked me into it. <laughs> Madame, mademoiselle. <laughs> my love and my mule are two of a kind. What to do, what to do, what to do? We didn't even introduce them. Shh, quiet. 
I tell you, Andy, there's something squidgy about the whole thing. Squidgy? In the first place, giving up the room, then going off with him, a stranger, just like that. And why should a foreigner sing cowboy songs? I don't know, dear. But your uncle was an American, and he loved to sing, Oh, solo mio. Of course, that was different. He really never knew the words. I must find some way to make a living. We think inventory. I could teach uh, dancing, singing, boxing, chess, horseback riding. But I don't like to teach. Ah! No. Well, what about an antique shop? Good. I take old clocks and make them into lamps. I take old lamps and make them into clocks. <laughs> <laughs> A restaurant. Why didn't we think of this before? A restaurant right in Beverly Hills. The King's Chop House. No. <laughs> Al's place. <laughs> but I am not worried. In America, your success story is very common. Like your Paul Hunter. I read in the magazine he started by selling newspaper in the street. They say that about most successful men, but in Paul's case, it happens to be true. Tell me more about him. What do you want to know? Everything. Well, he's tall, dark, intelligent, and sometimes quite handsome. Dark, huh? And he's in love with me. <laughs> and who is not? <laughs> Tell me about your new picture. What is the story? Uh, an American girl falls in love with a king. What a coincidence. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> Who will play this king? Well, we don't know. We've tested more than a dozen actors, but there's always something missing. <laughs> Fredda, how would I photograph? How would you photograph? For a thousand years, actors have grown wealthy playing kings. <laughs> it would be a beautiful event. Beautiful. <laughs> what a wonderful country this is America. Only a few moments ago, I am a lowly restaurant proprietor. Now, I am the star of the picture. Co-star, darling. Well, with my new success, I can afford to be generous. <laughs> In this picture, do I make love to you? Oh, yes. I think I can do that very convincingly. You're serious. <laughs> Never have I been more serious in all my life. But perhaps your Paul will think I am not the type. My Paul has a wonderful eye for talent. Everything okay, folks? You have no idea how okay. <laughs> Would you mind, Miss Perla? Not at all. Thank you very much. Surely. Next year, I will sign the autograph book. <laughs> well, hello. Hello, señorita. ¿Cómo está? Hello, Miss Barbara. Nice to see you. Hello. 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 Mr. Imperium, I want you to meet the Guadalajara trio. How do you do? How do you when do you start your picture, Miss Barlow? He means when we work. Well, it won't be long now. You have found someone to play the king? I think we have. Well, you are. Besides making love to you, I also sing. Oh, I'm afraid you do, darling. In what language? Well, you do one number in Spanish. Why? Because these are my friends and I want to give them a job. Oh, I suppose I asked them if they know such and such a song and they will answer yes. Well, if they answered no, there wouldn't be any song. Uh -huh. Go on, ask us. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see now. Well, let's see. Do you know uh, uh, Solamente Una Vez? Well, well, yes, 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 Solamente Una Vez. A me en la vida, solamente una vez y nada más. Una vez nada más en mi huerto brilló la esperanza. 
La esperanza que alumbra el camino de mi soledad Una vez nada más Se entregue el alma Con la dulce total Renunciación Nada más en mi huerto brilló la esperanza, la esperanza que alumbra el camino de mi soledad. Now you do one in English. Oh, I am a king. I can sing in every language. <laughs> you belong to my heart. Now and forever. And our love at its start So long ago We were gathering stars While a million guitars played our love song When I said I love you Every beat of my heart said it too My heart said it too was a moment like this do you remember and your eyes through a kiss when they met mine now we own all the stars and a million guitars are still playing Darling, you are the song and you'll always belong to my heart. You belong to my heart. <laughs> Notice her car isn't here yet? Maybe she put it around on the other side of the house. Oh, Auntie. They aren't home. Their doors are still open and her lights out. And it's after 11. Yes, it do. It doesn't take that long. It doesn't take that long for what? To eat steak and potatoes. They might have gone for a drive. There's nothing restful about a drive. Well, she said she came down here to rest. Well, she rested all afternoon. How do you know? The drapes are drawn. So were his. So were his what? Drapes drawn. He rested, too. I wonder. Gwen, dear, it isn't good for you to wonder so much. But I do wonder, Auntie. What about, for goodness sakes? Oh, Auntie. I don't mean to be rude. Really, I don't. But well, I guess I guess when you get older, you just get naive. Really? What would you say if the doors between their rooms were unlocked? Oh, well, they couldn't be, dear. I locked myself this morning. But suppose they were unlocked now. Oh, good heavens, Gwen, no. There's one way to find out. Come on. <laughs> you belong to my heart. No. Now and forever. And our love had its start so long ago. Una vez nada más. Oh, I've done it again. Forgive me. I really meant to keep my promise. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Imperium. You sounded so happy. Happy? <laughs> How could one help but be happy to drive through the night with so beautiful a companion? Of course I am happy. And are you happy too, Miss Barlow? I? Oh, ever so happy. Full of good food, clean desert air, and, and all of a sudden I'm utterly exhausted. Oh, and I too. What a wonderful place to rest, this desert. Well, good night, Miss Barlow. And thank you so much for a delightful evening. I enjoyed it. Good night, and blessed be the coincidence. Who knows what may happen next? Good night. Oh, Miss Barlow. 
I hope he hasn't made a bore of himself. Oh, no, Miss Cabot. Bore is hardly the word. What is the word, Miss Barlow? Uh, the word? I never could find the right word when I wanted it. But believe me, my dear, it isn't bore. Good night. Good night. There, you see. He's gone to his room, and she's on her way to hers. I can't imagine what makes you think the things you do. Maybe it's your asthma. Squidgy. Come on, it's time to go to bed. Long distance, please. I want Beverly Hills, Crestview, 54124. Uh, 1497. I'm calling Paul. It's pretty late. Well, he has a phone by his bed. Oh, he yeah, has, does he? Well, I imagine he has. Most executives do, you know. Oh, no, I didn't know. Well, now you do. Hello? Hello, Paul? Did I wake you? No? Oh, I'm glad. You don't? Oh, that's sweet of you, darling. What, darling? Oh, yes, darling. Of course, darling. In show business, everybody calls everybody darling. Oh. What, darling? No, no, I was just talking to a friend. Well, you don't know him, Paul. He's a very old friend. And Paul is the most extraordinary thing, but he would be absolutely marvelous as the king. She wants him to play the king. The terrible part is, His Majesty would be superb. <laughs> yes, Freddy, yes. I have every confidence in your enthusiasm, but um, why didn't you suggest him before? He wasn't available. Now, Mr. Hunt, you see how serious this is. How important it is that something should be done at once. No, no, I've got too much at stake. Freddy must make her own decision. What's that, Freddy? I said we'll come in tonight. And call Anna for me, will you, darling? Tell her to prepare the guest room. Well, I, I'm only being hospitable. And then, Paul, be at my house at 10 in the morning. Please do. What? Well, yes, I know tomorrow isn't Monday. Well, I can't talk about it over the phone. You haven't? I? Well, not now, darling, please. That's right. In the morning at 10. Bye. He stayed home all evening. Why? He said he didn't want to take the chance of falling in love with someone else. Obviously, you know, gambler. <laughs> Darling, we've got to pack and drive to Beverly Hills. And we'd better get started before we... Before we what? Before we forget a lot of things that simply have to be remembered. For instance? For instance, a three-hour drive to Beverly Hills. A drive to Beverly Hills was not exactly what they had planned. Darling, will you get packed? Certainly, Your Majesty. Oh, so that's it. Could we, could we perhaps pay it a visit? No, oh, but there'll be nothing to see except some empty stages and the night watchman. <laughs> I have always liked fashionable resorts out of season. All right. There is something I'd like to show you at that. Hello, Miss Barlow. Hello, Lucky. Will you turn the lights on, please? Sure thing. You want them all on, Miss Barlow? Every last one. Come on, I want to really show you something. Now, you wait right here. All right. Ready? Ready. I'm the Amo. Well, well, what a coincidence. Isn't it? 
What happened to those wonderful people from Texas? Oh, they struck oil. They always do. <laughs> Miss Barlow. Yes? This old thing is what we call in America a setup. Uh, yes. You have plans. <laughs> yes. You have done this before? Oh, yes. And always with great success? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and sometimes, not very often, sometimes a failure? Mm, yes. <laughs> Tonight, you will have no failure. I am what you call not hard to get. You have suspected this? <laughs> Yes. It is incredible, my darling, that one man could be so happy and at the same time so hungry. <laughs> Me too. Now, we have to find a name for you. I have a name. Oh, well, Imperium is fine, but I mean we have to get a first name. But I also have a first name, Alexei I Day. know, I know, Alexei de Gabble de Goud or something or other. No, something simple like... Joe, George, Harry, Sam, Ignat. <laughs> Beautiful. The Shadow of a Throne, starring Fred de Barlow and Ignat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'll be Paul. Now listen, darling. Don't be over eager. Just let him do most of the talking. And when it comes to money, I'll handle that. Oh, not that Paul isn't generous, but after all, he is a businessman. And I'm only an artist. Yes. Paul, darling, I... Your Majesty. Madame. I bring you Mr. Hunter's apologies, but he felt that his presence would lend further embarrassment to an already awkward situation. No apologies are necessary, Bernard. No one in all the world could be more welcome. I was just beginning to worry about how I could find you. But I should have known. Like a bad penny, you turn up at the opportune moment. Forgive me, Miss Barlow. You do remember, Bernard. Yes, I seem to remember that we did meet once before. I'm sure Madame understands by now that there are things in the course of our duties. I understand many things, Bernard, but not what brings you here. <laughs> but I understand, Freda. He's come about the plebiscite, haven't you, Bernard? About the speech I am to make on Tuesday. Exactly. Your Majesty's unscheduled departure from Paris created a vacuum that was not... Uh, Precisely part of our plan. Oh, yes, our plans. That's what I want to see you about, Bernard. I think you should know that there has been a slight alteration in our plans. There is hardly time for alterations, Your Majesty. The speech must be made on Tuesday or else... No, my friend. On Tuesday, you'll tell our people and thus the world that I renounce the throne. Your Majesty. Twelve years ago, I made a grave mistake. It is somewhat by you. Only a fool would lose the same battle twice. So tell my people their king has made his final choice to spend the rest of his life with the woman he loves. Do you realize what you're doing, madame? Do you realize... I realize that this time there's no letter for you to burn, no lies that you can tell. Your Majesty, I have no intention of... You permitting... forget yourself, Bernard. My abdication will take place on Tuesday. This is only Saturday. I am still the king. You may go. Surely your majesty knows me well enough to know that I would not undertake this long and tiresome journey without baggage. Baggage? <laughs> it's diplomatic language for the ace of trumps. Come, come, you have baggage. Then let us examine it. By all means. You know, madame, that after the war ended, we had a revolution. You will find Miss Barlow very well informed. Good. But this she may not know. Our people now are weary of revolution. They want their king again. And they are going to have a king, madame. If not the father, then they'll have the son. The son? Where is your son? In England with good friends, enjoying life like any English boy. He loves his life in England, I'm told. It seems so cruel to put an end to it. Put an end to what? To his life. To his life? In England. Oh, well, he's, he's bluffing. My boy is safe in England. 
You know where he is. My news is somewhat later than your own. Then where is he? The moment that His Majesty disappeared, I took it upon myself to communicate with the Prince. He is at present somewhere on the continent in the care of good and patriotic friends. And if His Majesty remains silent, then I shall speak as His Majesty suggested, and I shall tell our countrymen that their king deserted them in their hour of need, and that his son will come to them and reign under my regency until he comes of age. My boy is safe in England. Where is your telephone? Oh, right here, the library. One moment, Your Majesty. The United States government has generously provided a military airplane. It is waiting at gate 44 at the Los Angeles International Airport. There will be no publicity. They will respect your incognito. I shall await you there. If any harm has come to my boy, Wait a moment. I want to talk to you. Please. Bernard, I can't believe that you would place a teenage boy upon the throne to, to be a target for a bomb. To be a target is the destiny of anyone who rules. Listen to me, Bernard. Tomorrow I can sign a contract for, for ten years. I'll give you half, three quarters of my salary. More if you like. If? If you'll return the boy to England and... and... Let His Majesty stay here with you? And let His Majesty stay here with me. I have never envied His Majesty his crown but to be loved so deeply by one so beautiful. Of that, I am indeed envious. Yes? Yes, that's right. Mr. Clifton Taylor, Ainsbury School, Sussex, England. Thank you. They will call right back. But it doesn't seem possible that a prince could be kidnapped without the whole world knowing about it. It's the one thing I'm counting on. Funny. In a moment like this, when my whole world is falling to pieces, to be concerned with such a little thing. What little thing? That bow. Bernan's bow. You didn't notice. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. That insulting little bow from the neck. It's all I get from him. He knows it infuriates me. That's why he does it. Now to my father. Your Majesty. Hello. Hello. Hello, Mr. Taylor. This is King Alexi speaking. Yes? Fine. Thank you, fine. Tell me. I have been led to believe that is, uh, there is a rumor that my son. What is that? He did? Yes, of course I'll wait. The boy was not kidnapped. Oh, thank heaven. No, he left of his own accord. He left a note uh, to the headmaster. He's going to read it to me. Have you pencil and paper? Yes. Yes? Yes, Mr. Taylor. My country is in danger. And I can do no less than go to her aid. Were my personal happiness the only consideration, I should like to have remained in England forever with those I love. But I have been taught that battles are never won 
by running away. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Thank you. Seventeen years old. You taught him to ride. You taught him to box. Perhaps you taught him this, too. Arrivederci, darling. Arrivederci. He certainly was the type. He certainly was. He didn't like the part? He didn't like the part. What now, Freda? Five pictures, ten pictures, twenty if you like. Between pictures? All that time between pictures, Freda. Any plans? He said, Arrivederci. What does that mean? I'll be seeing you. Arrivederci, darling. Arrivederci.